We're going to learn more about series, including the divergence test. Let's look at another series, and this one appears to approach a finite value. It appears to have a limit. So when will a series have a limit? Well, how we get this partial sums sequence is we take the first term and we add it on. Then we add the next term on, and the next term, and the next term. If we have this sequence of partial sums and adding on the next term, the only way that this is going to converge to a finite value is if these terms are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and in fact going to zero because if the terms do not go to zero, we will never have a bound or a limit on this. So we have a theorem if the series is convergent, then the limit as n goes to infinity of the terms is zero. Let's see why that would have to be the case then. So we're going to have the partial sum, the nth sum, and it's going to be adding those up up to n terms. Now if we know that the nth term is going to be the partial sum at n minus the partial sum at n minus one, that would leave us that term. Since given for this theorem that the series is convergent, then the sequence must be convergent. We had our definition there. And so we'll let the limit as n goes to infinity of s sub n equal L. So it has to have a limit here. But since n minus 1 is also going to approach infinity as n approaches infinity, we get so far out there that the minus 1 is insignificant, then the limit as n approaches infinity of s sub n minus 1 is also L. And so therefore the limit of the terms, because we take the limit here, limit here, limit here, and here we have it, um, this must be L minus L which is 0. So if a series is convergent, then looking at the sequence of its terms, the limit as n goes to infinity of that sequence must be zero. Now as we look at this theorem, let's consider a couple of things. The converse is when you reverse the two parts. It says if p then q, the converse would be if q then p. So if we take this and we turn it around and say if the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals zero, then the series is convergent. Is that true? The answer is not true. We saw that with the harmonic series. The harmonic series diverged, yet this was true. The limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n equals zero. So we have to be careful that we don't try and use this in reverse. The converse is not true. Let's look at the contrapositive by reversing it and negating the two parts. So if p then q, the contrapositive is if not p then not q. So that would say if the limit of the terms does not go to zero, then the series is not convergent. And that is true. Contrapositive is always true. And so it basically says if this is true, then this. So if you don't have this, then you don't have that. So that is called the divergence test and it's just simply the contrapositive of that first theorem. It's sometimes also called the divergence theorem or the nth term test. And it says if the limit as n goes to infinity of this sequence, which would be the terms in the series, does not exist or if it does not equal zero, then the series is divergent. This is going to be huge. It's something we want to take note of because we are going to be looking at a bunch of series and trying to determine if they are convergent or divergent. And if the terms do not go to zero, they are divergent. We're done testing. Now something we have to be very careful about is when we know that the limit of the terms goes to zero, we have to remember the famous saying from Sergeant Schultz of Hogan's Heroes, if any of you are old enough to remember this. And this is what he said. I know nothing, nothing. So remember, if we know that the terms in the series go to zero, we know nothing. 
it doesn't work in the converse and so be careful about that the harmonic series is a good example the terms go to zero but it's a divergent series so if we look at some convergent series then we have some properties that would be true if it converges then a constant multiple is also convergent because we have it converged to a value and we're multiplying it by a finite value and if we have the sum or the difference they are also convergent because again if it converges we have a finite value and we're summing two finite values or subtracting two finite values and properties of these series just simply follow with properties of summation so we can do the constant inside now or later we can sum them now or later we can subtract them now or later okay let's suppose we're able to show that this series is convergent now this series started with n equaling 4 not 1 and we can determine that by what's listed here so if we looked at this series that did start at 1 it would be the series that started at 4 plus the first three terms and so it follows that this entire series would be convergent because we know that this converged to a finite value if we knew it was convergent and we're adding on a finite value so it would also be convergent so it doesn't really matter what this number is here we're interested in since we're going to infinity what's going on towards the end and the first terms however many you had there will affect the value but it won't affect the convergence so the leading terms of an infinite series are those at the beginning with the small index number and the tail are the ones at the end with large and increasing index number as we're going towards infinity so the convergence or divergence of an infinite series depends on the tail what's going on at the end while the value of the convergent series primarily depends on the leading terms. So as we look at this infinite series that does converge to 1, if we summed up the first six terms, we're at a number that's fairly close to 1 already. The value is dependent on these, and we're adding smaller and smaller things here that become less and less significant. But what's going on in the tail will determine the convergence.